Um, so because I have a few extra minutes, I like throwing a curveball or two at the beginning. Um, and this is not hard hitting, I promise. Um, top instead of potatoes. <laughs> right? Was that right? 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 Very close. It was very close. Um, but the other question was going to be, um, if someone has actually never seen anything that either of you have done, what's the first thing you want them watching and why? Oh, 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 oh. Hmm. Daredevil, because I see all the figurines you have in the back. <laughs> um, probably uh, Gravity for me, but the behind the scenes of Gravity. Not, not the movie. Yeah, not the movie. Yeah, just the behind the scenes. Yeah. No, the whole, the, the whole movie first and then the behind the scenes. Uh, Sandra, I read that you are a big true crime TV show junkie. And I'm, and I'm just curious, if someone has really not gotten into the genre, what's like the one or two that they really need to see? Uh, what The one that... Is, I can't, yeah, I've watched rerun after rerun and you can correct me, the staircase, the stair, the writer whose wife died at the base of the stairs. He was a famous writer. What was it called? Can anyone, does anyone know the staircase? Um, might've been called the staircase. Fascinating. <laughs> Wealthy white people, famous writer. The wife dies at the base of the stairs. Somehow the owl theory comes into it that an owl attacked her. Like it is so fascinating. And I, 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 every time I watch it, I see and hear something else. So that one is just the one that I can't let go. Rob, you need to watch it. I, I'm trying to stay out of the jail system. So I leave that stuff alone. I think he's out of jail. So you can watch this one. <laughs> okay. Jumping into why I get to talk to you. Um, for each of you, what was it actually about this story, these characters that said, I really want to make this? Mm. For, for me, I, I can't stress enough, man. I know Sandra laughs every time I say this, but I was really impressed when I got a script and it showed a white woman doing 20 years in prison for whatever the case, because we rarely, if at all, other than Orange is the New Black, right? But if at all, get to see a true human story of, of a white woman doing 20 years in jail. And then when I researched it, I saw that from 2000 to 2019, uh, the state and federal prison uh, population from white women has increased by 41%. And I was like, wow, that's, that's interesting. We never had these kind of conversations. So, you know, I took that on as like, you know, being a part of a, a film that could start a healthy dialogue in a way that we could see what is going on with our prison uh, industrial complex system. And then also touch on how just uh, the biggest flaw to justice is being poor or having like no resources, you know? And, and, and I felt that this story where we start with a woman whose family house is being threatened to take, being taken away from her, was something that we all could could identify with and resonate with, and and I just love being a part of uh, films that that challenge our ideas of who we are as a society and 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 have us come together and and start a, a healthy dialogue. So that was one of my main attractions. All of that, uh, you know, all of that lumped into one, Steve. How do you follow that? <laughs> oh, the pain of my existence. I follow Rob Morgan, and I'm just silenced. I have nothing. No, no. But yeah. I mean, what's it, it's everything that Rob said, and and you know, we want you to judge in this film. We want you to judge heavily. Use your life experience and your eyes and your um, journey in life to judge what we're presenting to you. And then, as soon as you think you've got a handle on it, we want you to see the other side. There's always two sides, um, and being born into poverty, not having resources, automatically makes you unseen to so many. Why is that? And 80% of our, our beautiful human family is born into poverty and babies are born into poverty and they are not seen. How do you grow up soft and hopeful? Mm. How do you do it? 
one of the, I love talking to actors about the way they get ready for performances, for, for their roles. Um, for both of you, if you have like a really tough scene on a Monday, say it's really dramatic, really emotional, you know it's going to take a lot out of you. Can you sort of take me through your process before that Monday? What exactly are you doing? Is it a week out that you're like starting to stress or like how, how do each of you like to get ready for something like that? Mm, that's a great question. <laughs> It is a great question. Rob? Well, I mean, we can't negate our personal lives too, Steve. Mm -hmm. You know, we still got stuff we got to do for ourselves at the same time, prepare for the roles. You know, I'm pretty sure we all have our different approaches, but myself, if that's why the first thing I ask for is uh, the, the, the schedule. So I could see what I'm working on, what days coming up, what scenes, are, at least the idea, because sometimes the schedule changes. But I try to see what I'm doing before and then mentally while I'm doing everything else in my everyday life that I have to still maintain, I'm preparing at the same time and probably including parts of my everyday life into my preparation so that when I show up on set, I could just be that locked in and in tune. So yeah. I bring everything I'm doing really like the day before all my stuff, you know, me, you know, the letdown I have in my personal life, the high I have in my personal life, you know, the confusion I have in my personal life. I can't just drop all that just because I have an emotional scene the, the day coming up. You know, I still have to live that and bring that to set too, you know, with the voice of the character in mind, the truth of the character in mind. Again, you call that? Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, mine has evolved over time. I think knowing the schedule and knowing the daunting fisheye lens of the date of that scene is something that used to haunt me so much because um, you're afraid of failure. You're afraid of not hitting the moment. You're afraid of letting a, a team and a crew down who know, we know we have four hours to shoot this scene. And if you don't get it in those four hours, you have failed in, in my mind. But once I had kids, I realized, guess what? The minute I'm home, I am theirs. So where do I carve out my time? In dark cars with my iPhone being my flashlight is where I learn the lines. After they're asleep, right next to me on the bed is when I have those moments. Um, I take who I am to them and who they are to me into the Ruth journey because I, I you know, ask myself all the time, what would I have done? And I probably would have done the same thing. I would have done the same thing. Um, because I know how society will be to them. Very different to a mother with white children. Um, so I take all of that very heavily to work, but then you have to let it go the minute you're opposite brilliant actors because your job now is to have done your homework, know your lines, let it go and listen. Because often what's in your head and you're playing out, this is how I'm gonna play the scene and this is where I'm gonna break and guess what? You have no idea what Rob Morgan's gonna throw at you to stop you in your tracks and make you listen. You have no idea what Viola Davis or Vincent or, or John Bernthal are going to throw at you to make you listen. And your scene takes a complete left turn that you've been planning for four months. So I've learned, and I think with the blessing of my babies, is that sometimes you just got to prepare and let it go because someone better is going to come in and tell you, you thought you were going this way. We're going to go take a left. You know, and your director comes in and gives you a note that completely blows your mind and you haven't seen um, so I've learned to listen, just come prepared, um, utilize a dark car and my iPhone flashlight, um, but still make time for, as Rob said, home, you got to make time for home. On that note, I got to stop. I'm just going to say congrats on the movie. I really enjoy both of your work. Thank you for giving me your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.